Hello guys, today we are going to take a look at our modified vehicle control board and I'll be showing you how to export the Gerber files so that we can get the PCB professionally manufactured. The software we're using here is Eagle, uh, it's related to Autodesk Fusion so that's probably why you can see Fusion in the right hand corner. So we'll just take a look at our layers here, you select out with the option in the left corner. Uh, that was the bottom layer in blue and you'll see the top layer is in red so this is the top layer of our PCB selected with the control in the top left if we look at a PCB for assembly it's important that you include the designators of the different components so that's what I'm showing here if you're just getting the PCB manufactured it doesn't really matter because you'll be placing the components on the board but if they're going to hand assemble the PCB because your production run is so low for example they're going to need to see what component goes where so that they can get an idea of orientation or even just as a quick reference when they're setting up the pick and place machine they might want to just see what component goes where we can't see the designator on the voltage regulator there so we can go in and uh, hide a particular layer if we want to expose something like that I mentioned uh, there's a link to Fusion 360 so if you see on the right hand side you can select that to export your model to your Fusion 360 account if you are trying to make a 3D printed enclosure for your device then uh, that would be really useful but just be aware that not all libraries would have the actual CAD file or the CAD model of the components because Autodesk only bought uh, Eagle around about a year ago so for example my model wouldn't export because I've created it before Autodesk was linked to it so the, the CAD just wouldn't be there I'd have to go in and change the components to the, the modern versions what we are interested in today is the manufacturing tab though so as soon as we click it we can see our PCB as it would probably look in reality that was the top side here's the bottom side and there's the drill and now if we go up to the tabs on the top we can look through some of the information about our PCB board thicknesses, copper layers, drills all that sort of information, how many components are being used, things like that so when you're happy with that you just go back to the first page and hit the cam button the first thing you want to do when you're here is load your cam file which is basically all your default settings if you haven't got them then you can work off a template create a new one and just start so I'm obviously using one that I've used before which is already set up for the manufacturer that I want to use the first level of your output files is for the Gerbers and you have to choose the output type and the only way you can do that is by going to your manufacturers website and finding out what output type they need so in my case I'm going with PCB way and I know they need a Gerber in RS274X format. Top copper is the first layer you see and that has three different layers so it's the top, the pads and the vias. So the top is going to be all your signal connections, all your, your PCB traces. The pads is going to be the pads for your components so whether it's SMD or true hole it's going to have a pad and the vias are the connections between the signals between the top and the bottom layers of your PCB next is the bottom copper layer and that's pretty much the same you've the three layers of this one are bottom pads and vias bottom is going to be all your signal traces the pads uh, they could be the SMD pads for the bottom side or they could be the other side of the true hole pads that have come through from the top layer and that's the same with the vias, it's going to be the other side of the vias that have come through from the other side. The next Gerber we have is the profile and that is basically just the shape of the PCB, whatever outline we want them to cut around our PCB. You can pretty much get them to cut any shape you want but don't forget that if you take some weird shape and they can't use the material in the middle then you're going to have to pay for that. The top sort of mask is next and that's basically a layer that prevents the solder from sticking to the copper in the areas that are not shown in black 
So the pads that you're seeing in black, they will be exposed to the solder. So the T-stop you see there, it means that's where the layer stops. So the solder mask layer doesn't go into the area shown by T-stop. And then for the bottom solder mask, it's the same again, only this time it's B-stop is the layer that you use for solder mask. The next layer is the top solder paste, and that is telling the manufacturer where you want them to put the solder paste. So basically the areas you're seeing in black there, they are going to be cut out of the stencil. So when they put the stencil on your PCB and then run the solder paste across it, those are the only spots that are going to get solder paste. And that's the same on the bottom, but notice that the true hole pads aren't there. So if we go back to the other layer, you can see the circles for the true hole pads. That's because if those holes were present in the stencil, the solder paste would cover those holes and then when the PCB comes out of the oven, those true holes would not be true hole, they would be filled full of solder. The next layer is the silk screen, so that is basically printed on top of your PCB. It's just a layer that contains text, maybe an outline of some of the components. The important thing is probably the designators of the components if you're getting it assembled. But it's fairly simple, it's pretty much just printed on like and like you'd print on a piece of paper. And it's exactly the same on the bottom. But just make sure you have the right layers uh, selected there. It depends what way you wrote the text on your PCB. Next is the drill file. I think you can change the file format here, but I've never had to. Uh, I don't know really why you would. I think most manufacturers take Exelon files, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Then you have your bill of materials, what way you want to export that. There's an option there for CSV, text, you can get it all into Excel, and it's pretty much the same for the pick and place. But it's not really going to be in the format that you want to send to the manufacturer, I don't think. So I'll show you how I format that before I send it off to the manufacturer too. There's two more options there for drawings and legacy. I don't really know what they do. They never seem to export it for me, uh, so don't really worry about them. So all you have to do is hit process job. The software has now exported a zip file, so we're going to right click that and just extract all the contents. Now if we take a look in our extracted files, we have three folders. The first one is your assembly files. So that's your bomb and a pick and place file for the top and the bottom side of your PCB. The next one is the drill files, so only the drill file in there. And then the Gerber file, so that's all the different layers, the Gerber files for each layer that you generated. So the files aren't just ready to upload yet, so I like to create a new folder just for production files, the, the final files that I'm going to upload. And in that, I'm going to have two folders, one for the assembly files and one for the Gerber files. We'll deal with the Gerber files first. These are the files you need to upload to get your PCB manufactured. Even if you weren't getting it assembled, these are the files you would need to get ready just to have the PCB uh, sorted. And usually how you upload them to the PCB manufacturer is you put all the files in a zip folder. So the drill file and the Gerber files all in one and all in a zip file. So I'm just copying the drill file and the Gerber file all into the one folder. And then we are going to zip that uh, folder. So now we have our zip file that we can upload to our PCB manufacturer. So now we'll take a look at the files that we generated for our bomb. And if we double click it to open it in Excel, it isn't formatted correctly. It comes through all piled in one. So we're gonna have to import that as data. So open a blank Excel workbook, go to data, and then from text to import your data. Select your file and then the import wizard opens up. So you hit next. And if you look at the data, we can see there's semicolons there. So hit separate by semicolon. And then that's it, just hit next and okay. And now we can see the auto generated bomb. So uh, you have on the left there quantities, values, devices, packages, parts. Uh, 
pretty much all the data automatically generated but some of it is information that we don't need or some of it is not the correct information for the part we've just selected a package that has the right footprint but it's not necessarily the right part for the assembly process some of them are just generic footprints like the resistors and the capacitors they don't specify manufacturer or a part number and then on the bottom we have our pin headers we don't want to assemble pin headers but they're there and even the test pins are there but they're just test pads they're not actually a part to be assembled so this is just a list of every component we imported into eagle to create our circuit if you tried to upload this to the manufacturer they wouldn't have a hope of assembling your board so if we take a look at my bomb for this board you'll see that we've a lot less parts here so there's only seven now in the bomb that's because i've taken out all the pin headers and different things like that i have the descriptors all marked and then the manufacturer and the part number and then a little description so that the whoever's checking this has an idea what they're supposed to have there and of course the type of part that you want whether you want the smd component although the part number should help you there if you look at the previous one we had a huge amount of information there but kind of no information at the same time so this is more what you'd really want to be uploading to your manufacturer you want to upload a bomb that you've actually checked yourself that's the bomb looking good so now let's get the pick and place file sorted this is what our top layer pick and place file looks like we have the designators on the left then you have the x and y positions followed by the angle of rotation then a description column and then a footprint column if we look at the file for the bottom layer it's the same but uh, note that the you have the test pads there which again aren't something that needs to be picked and placed but it's on the list because it was a part that we added to our circuit when we were designing the pcb i'm not sure all manufacturers actually want to see two files i know for pcb way you can only upload a single file so let's take a look at my pick and place file it's similar enough that the designators positions the rotation and the comments but we have an extra column on the right hand side which tells the manufacturer whether the parts going on the top or the bottom of the pcb and we've got rid of the things that aren't physical parts like the test pads that shouldn't be on the pick and place file and that's basically it we have our files ready now so in the next video i'll uh, upload those files to pcb manufacturer uh, pcb way has a deal on at the minute so we're going to take advantage of that uh, normally it'd be quite expensive to get a pcb assembled but that'll give me the opportunity to show you the whole process and then we'll be able to take a look at the pcbs when it's finished so make sure you don't miss out by hitting subscribe and getting the bell on and as always you can discuss the videos in the comments below or head on over to the website and you can take a look on the forum there. Well that's all I have for today so I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks very much for watching.